Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining me. <clears throat> now, we've been talking a little bit about coyote calling competitions and uh, how you can increase your success and some of the tech tips and techniques and tactics that I've used over the years. Now, we're going to get into the weapons. Um, there's, there's the two different kinds of weapons that you're going to use in a competition and that's mainly the shotgun or the rifle um, and then you can choose to go suppressed. Nowadays I think uh, there's a lot of people doing the suppressed and I think that is the best way to kill coyotes and kill numbers of coyotes on one property in tight areas because when you go in and call a spot a lot of times when you're shooting a six millimeter or a 243 Ackley or 22 250 um, you're waking up the countryside with your gunshot okay so typically what happens when you're in a competition setting when you fire that rifle not so much with a shotgun because a shotgun is more of a it's a softer boom and they uh, I don't feel like it's as spooky to a shot uh, to a coyote because that shotgun represents more of the waterfowl hunter, the upland bird. It's not the big echoey uh, blast of a rifle shot. Um, but typically, when you're hunting suppressed, you're able to slip into an area, call it, call soft, call in a coyote, kill him move just a little bit further, call in another coyote, kill him, and you're not letting the whole countryside know that you're in there. So I think suppressed hunting is the way to go. I've put in for all my permits already. It takes eight, nine months to get a suppress, uh, get your tax stamp. I'm all put in, so next year you're gonna see me hunting with a suppressor. Um, I've already got one suppressed gun, which is a 22 long rifle. Um, and I will be showing you hunt, coyote hunts with that as well and raccoon hunts. But when it comes to shotgun hunting, when my brother and I were hunting full force in competition, I typically did all the calling, always. I would sit back, my brother would go 20 to 50 yards in front of me and he would typically set a little bit to the downwind. So if you had a wind like this, coming across me like this, he would go ahead and he would sit on this side of me. Because if a coyote was coming in, he would want to circle to the wind to this side because he can get to it quicker going this way. And he didn't want to go upwind to try to get to it, hence it was coming this way. He wants to go with the wind and then get try to get downwind. And your setup is very important because if you're sitting on the front of a point and you have a draw that goes um, like over here, a draw that's going this way, my brother would sit over there towards that draw because a lot of times a, a predator's coming in, they're going to hit that draw, they're going to drop down in it, and then they're going to try to go out around you to get behind you. So there's tips and tactics on how you set up. And the coyotes, when I did the calling, if I seen a coyote coming, I wouldn't just set up like a bump on a log and sit there and call that coyote. I got down and I, if I had a sage bush in front of me, I'm behind that sage bush and I'm coaxing and I'm coaxing. That coyote can't even see me. He comes in, he's, he's just pinpointed on me. He's looking for me because he knows the sounds right there. And whenever he got so close, our method of talking without making a noise was when that coyote would disappear in front of my brother, he would raise his shotgun. That was his way of telling me, I got this, he's in shotgun range. We, we came up with the, the wording that when you raised a gun, you could kill the coyote. So when I, when I caught the movement, I, I thought I would just smile because I was like, well, coyote, you just messed up. You're in my brother's kill, kill range now and you're dead. Um, so that's how we set up. I would carry a rifle and a shotgun, but if I had one coming in, our goal was to always call that thing in the shotgun range. Um, if I saw that that coyote was gonna start circling out there at 100 yards, 150 yards, typically I had my rifle pointed more towards the downwind anyway, and I was ready for him, and I would get ready for him. 
Now, in the instance that I couldn't move, that coyote had me pinpointed, I was on the side of a hill, and I couldn't move, and that coyote's looking right at me, my brother would carry a 223, a model, uh, an H&K model 630 semi-automatic, and that, that rifle was phenomenal for making those 200-yard shots, 100-yard shots, 150-yard shots. My brother would get on the coyote when he could, because he knew that coyote was zoned in on me. He could see that Les can't move, so I better kill this coyote, or I would just go <laughs> lip squeak once to let him know, dude, I can't shoot, I can't move, I'm tied up, kill that coyote. And then my brother would slowly get his rifle up, and the coyote would never even look at him, and he would shoot it with his 223. So um, my caliber of choice whenever I was in, a, in competition was always the 22 250. Uh, there's a saying that's out there, beware the, the man that shoots one gun. And there's a lot of truth to that. I had a rifle and I, I'll do videos on my rifle, my competition gun. Um, I shot it and I shot it very, very well. Uh, I shot it with a, I hand loaded every, every load with a Hornady 52 grain boat tail hollow point match bullet shoot max velocity, velocity about 3,680 feet per second. Uh, I always sighted my rifle in inch and three quarter high at 100. Um, so I was dead on anything out to 320, 340. I just held dead on and I'd kill those coyotes, especially when I was in the, in the Western United States. Uh, just an absolute tack driver and it was a, a great bullet for the windy conditions. Uh, just a all around coyote killing bullet. So that's the part of the rifle. Uh, there, in competition arena, there's guys that are shooting six millimeters, 243s. Those are great guns, great guns. They pack a wall up to a coyote. Um, I'm not much on a, you know, every day shooting a 223. I like my 250. I, I was brought up shooting it. That's what I want to shoot. So stand back and let me kill some coyotes and I'll show you how it's done. Now finally, we're going to dive into the, the hand call versus the e-call. Um, it's uh, anymore back in the day when I was using hand calls and, and really into competition calling there really wasn't e-calls that could even hold a candle to a hand call. Uh, nowadays, there's e-calls that are so loud, there's no way I can produce a sound that loud. And some days you need that sound. Uh, you've got to get it out there. And the other pro for an e-call is most of the sounds that have ever been recorded, they're an actual animal. So I can't compete with that. I'm trying to imitate an animal in distress with my hand call, but uh, an e-call has an actual animal that's in distress. So you got a jackrabbit that's screaming bloody murder and it's an actual jackrabbit. I'm going wah, 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 and it's just an imitation, you know? So I can go up against e-calls, and I, I, I'm sure I could beat guys with e-calls, hands down. I could beat a lot of guys with e-calls. But there's some, some teams that are so in tune with using their e-call, they know they have a series of sounds that they're using. I can't compete with that. They're playing pup distress, and they're playing uh, jackrabbit distress, and cottontail distress, and uh, woodpecker distress, and they're, they're switching up to so many things. Now what I can do is coyote in distress, a coyote. Um, I can do that as good or better than anything out there and I've called in a ton of coyotes with coyote in distress. Um, but when it comes to competition setting, I like my hand call because I don't call real frequently. I don't just call for 15 minutes straight and, uh, uh, and that's the stand. I call I sit there and wait for two minutes. I call again, I wait for two minutes. I call again, I wait for three minutes. I call again, I wait for three and a half minutes. That's my setup. I like to be patient and sit there and let that animal 
show itself moving out there coming in i want to i want to make that animal come hunt me down so those are some of the things on a competition setting on what i do that's how i've set up that's the things i look for um i hope you you enjoyed this and if i missed anything please write in the comments below i'll try to read all the comments let me know something you want me to touch on and i will try to make a video on that if i feel it's important um hit the subscribe button and right beside it there's a little bell hit that bell and that will notify you every time i come out with a video java in the morning with les johnson so grab your cup of coffee sit down listen to what i'm saying digress it let it sink in i hope you like this video give me a thumbs up if you give me a thumbs up it puts me higher in the videos that are over on the right side of the of the youtube column so that way other people can watch them as well and it gives me a sense of satisfaction knowing that hey i i touched on something that somebody liked or enjoyed or learned something leave me a comment more importantly than anything that way i know you enjoyed it and maybe i know i'm on the right track with what i'm trying to teach or what i'm trying to uh, uh, give you as information uh, thank you so much for your time and i hope i wasn't too windy i hope you learned something please share it with your friends so that way you can try to dissect everything that I did in my competition years and hopefully it uh, can help all of you. Thanks so much.